I guess uh, how how um, the Sunday Night Astronomy Show started was that uh, Mike and Paul and I have been good friends for a long time and amateur astronomers together, you know, for almost all public events, local and that kind of thing. But we really look forward to the star party events mostly because they're a whole weekend away from all of your worries, you know, and uh, we have some really nice dark sky, registered dark sky sites here in New Brunswick. So the one that we would visit the most often and have most fun at was really the Fundy National Park Star Party, where we don't just all go over to relax and knowing that we would have a big crowd. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a thousand people walk through us on the, on the one weekend. So we were up, up observing one night. Once the crowd had all left, we were all wound up in coffee and cookies. So we, we usually stay up until early hours of the morning. And uh, as we were, we, were, we had a webcam set up looking at Jupiter and the moon. Um, and uh, I decided to grab my phone uh, because I had uh, a Facebook page up already called Astronomy by the Bay. It had been going since 2016. And I decided to try to go live from there. And I was getting a kind of an intermittent signal, but, uh, and then we were doing some live stacking as well. And the live stacking part kind of caught on, kind of watched it, so that, that looks okay. So I tried to stream it live. It worked on and off a little bit, a little bit choppy. But then Paul mentioned the fact, you know, wouldn't this be kind of neat if we could try to do this online sometime? You know, you know live stacking of, of images. And, you know, what, what could we do? Well, I mean, live stacking now is very common across, you know, with all, even with this little C-Star 50 telescopes that are coming out now. Um, but live stacking was kind of new back then for us. And uh, we decided to, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll start up a, a program. And Paul, we asked Paul, hey, what should we name it? And Paul named it, this, what we call it the Sunday Night Astronomy Show. Okay, great. So we said, that's what we'll do. So our first program, we come up live stacking. Uh, that's how we're going to offer the show. We had 1,100 views. And uh, we all looking like we were deer in the headlights, all just kind of staring straight ahead. Didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> we were on Google Meets at the time. Had no idea how to broadcast or anything else. But we played it out as a live show. And then over the last uh, last four years, I guess, we've had three clear nights on Sunday night. <laughs> <laughs> so... The second week was cloudy and we said, well, we got to come up with some other kind of a plan. You know, this isn't going to work out. And we looked ahead a few weeks and it was cloudy. So, so we just said, you know, let's, let's try to start offering something different. So we get into offering talks about telescopes and, you know, and, and it's more uh, down the avenue of a beginner uh, type of setup. So we welcome beginners into the hobby. That's what we, we see this. We're the welcoming door. Come on in. It's a great hobby. It's inviting. There's lots of groups. You know, you can get social with it. It's, there's camaraderie about, amongst it. And then once you get in here, if you want to go astrophotography direction or you want to learn about the moon or whatever, you can get you can go that way. But we're going to introduce you to the hobby. So that's what we've been doing with the program. Um, and it's kind of been good in a way, again, because through COVID, uh, people were looking for something to do. And uh, the show kind of carried itself in that way. Uh, in the last, I guess, year and a half, guys, uh, the local Rogers TV network has picked us up. So we're on their community channel now as well. They offer it uh, 15 times a week throughout the province in their different channels. Uh, but yes, it's been, a, it's been a fun journey. We are always trying to think of new ideas to come up with. Uh, recently now, we've, we've invited some, some guests on the, on the program uh, to talk to us a bit about what their experiences in astronomy. Um, local ash photographers or or uh, uh, Kurt Nason. You might know Kurt from uh, local here. He's been on usually once a month talking about constellations. So we get into that type of, a, of a, an atmosphere. And uh, the following has been, seemed to be pretty regular. Like the ones who have been following us from the beginning are kind of still there, which is really nice. And we've introduced it to some other people who have joined on from Australia and England and um, a lot of numbers from the US come in to, to, to see us. So. Um, we know that it's a it's a live uh, astronomy economy to show, <laughs> and we don't we don't really worry about how it's, you know we present as much as we can, but we know we're you know we're not all technically savvy. So, and it's mostly on my end because I'm the one who's running the pro the program on this side of it. Um, Mike and Paul join in, but I'm streaming it out to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. I'm watching comments, and so it's a uh, it's a it's a little bit of work to get the show ready for each week, but uh, it's been really well. A worthwhile project for us, I think. Really rewarding, for sure. So guys? Uh, well, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Um, we've um, we've done a lot of stuff on that show. Um, recently, we've... Um, um, I don't know where you guys are going for the solar eclipse, but 
we've been asked to uh, join the, the program out here in New Brunswick with the, the balloon that's going to be launched uh, to go about 100,000 feet up and image uh, the solar eclipse uh, from Florenceville, Bristol. Um, so that's uh, <clears throat> something that we're, uh, we're gearing towards. And um, that's going to be where we're going to be for our um, part of the solar eclipse. And the night before that, which is, of course, a Sunday night, we're going to do a broadcast from that, uh, that location as well. So that should be a lot of fun. Get to rub some elbows with people we haven't met. And um, that'll be is good because, again, it's just a matter of meeting new people as you go in this hobby. You know what that's like. And um, and being on the coast, this is actually going to be inland for us, so it would be a bit of a treat. But you guys are coasters as well, so you know what it's like, um, you know, with, uh, with moisture and humidity and, you know, being on the area where there's just continu continually uh, water in the air. So um, it'll be nice to go a little further inland, too, and you never know, like, get some observing in up there. Mike? <laughs> I'm just the roadie. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh when we when we started doing this show, like Chris said, where it was the deer in the headlight look, we had no idea what direction it was gonna go, if anybody was gonna even watch. And uh it's so it, it's so much fun to do and it's such a re, uh, how do you say it, reward to find out how many people are actually watching and appreciate, you know, the the information that we're trying to pass out to them. And, uh, you know, we, we get an opportunity, like Chris says, go right back to the beginners, you know, even how to use a pair of binoculars. How, how many people don't know how to just properly hold a pair of binoculars is, is amazing. And uh, you, you get to teach people that. Now with the eclipse coming, of course, we're adding to that, trying to you know, shy on the side of safety, but telling everybody, yes, well, you know, as long as you're properly filtered, you can photograph it. Uh, you can look at it, you know, you can watch it and it's our big, big, big thing for this year. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a uh, climate change or what, but our weather has not been good for 2023 was a write-off. We didn't even have a star party because every weekend was raining, but, uh, we're hoping 2024 will pick up and be better. I mean, we always, uh, <laughs> have that positive outlook to go, yeah, it's gotta get better. And, uh, we just keep enjoying what we do and I, we like to get down as well here in St. John. We have what's called Saints Rest Beach, which is right on the Bay of Fundy. And uh, a few years back, you couldn't see the Milky Way from Saints Rest Beach, but the city put in all these full cutoff streetlights and and stuff like that. And there's, I don't know if they're caring about it or if they actually knew what happened, but now you can actually stand on that beach and watch the Milky Way right over your head at night. So it's a beautiful place for us to get down. We just, you know, Chris calls and says, we going to the beach? Yep, we grab our scopes, get out of the beach, set up, and any of the public who wants to come along and have a look, or we're there. And, uh, yeah, the first time somebody sees Saturn in the eyepiece, there's no sound like it. Everybody's just, whoa. <laughs> and, that, you know, we get the same feeling doing the show, and it's uh, so enjoyable. And uh, as long as it stay, keeps being fun, we'll keep doing it. <laughs> Uh, I was I was wondering if I, I I wanted to ask a question of you guys that out of the two hundred episodes, uh, what were each of your favorites? Uh, getting by the first one for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was my big favorite because of like a, oh, a big sigh. Ah, boy, it's a favorite. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I liked our hundredth episode. That was fun. Um, yep. The Christmas ones were fun. We did some Christmas ones. We were dragging big hats on and giving away prizes. The ones that we give away prizes on, they're kind of nice too. I, I, on my Facebook page, I, I run a contest called Shoot the Moon. And uh, what I do is I just tell people, just go out, grab your cell phone. I'm not looking for any judging. There's no judging going on. Just go out, take a picture of the moon and enjoy the view while you're there. Send the picture in. You get entered in the contest. It's just a random draw. People get drawn for prizes. So it kind of gets them interacting, you know, uh, doing that. And uh, those dates when we're giving away prizes uh, from, from that aspect. And the last contest that I had, I actually had kids to submit their entries. And they, I asked them, look, what would you see through a telescope? What do you think you'd see through a telescope? So I had aliens, you know, uh, zoom, uh, beaming up people and all kinds of Martians. And it was all great, you know, and, and I put those all up on my page as, as, uh, as, as main pictures and stuff. So the interaction between us and the public is what I like the most. I don't know if I could pick one particular episode, but I know the hundredth one was a lot of fun. The two hundredth was actually a lot of fun as well. And I do, I did really did like the uh, the Christmas ones, the ones right around Christmas, because uh, it's it's more of a it's more of a happy place, I guess. 
The one I liked was uh, when Haley and uh, Joey were on. Oh, Haley yeah. and Joey, for those who don't know, mm -hmm. uh, Haley is a young, well, I guess she's 13 now, but mm -hmm. she, she hangs out with her dad and her dad and her do astronomy together. And, um, and so she's um, a, a bit of a techie for her age. Uh, I'm starting to 10, she got into it. And this recently, she bought herself uh, a sea star. So Joey's got a nice uh, astro imaging rig that he uses, but he wanted to get her something that she could use. So she embraced it to the point where she actually started to do YouTube videos about how to use a sea star. So she she went on and she did the unboxing, and then she told all about what the what the unit was, some specifications, and then she actually started to uh, do some imaging and all this. And uh, it just kind of brought me back to when I got interested in astronomy, because lots of times you get so wrapped up in it, and you get so busy and so indicted with, um, you know, with everything that you forget that joy that astronomy really is. And, um, and it was nice to see that joy coming from her talking about what she was talking about, because it brought me right back to when I first got in. And I think that was probably my favorite episode. <clears throat> Haley, uh, I gave her a bunch of uh, star finders because she wanted to present them to the class. So she had a picture of her, teacher took a picture of her standing in front of the class with the star finder. She was 12 years old and describing how they worked. They're like, very, very passionate about it. So I, if we can encourage the young generation like that, and I think the C star is going to be a big key there. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I know a lot of us are eyeballs to the IPs. You know, we, we talk about that a lot. But when you get someone young that is going to be you know it's all this right and it's tablets and everything else so it's that generation we have to accept the fact that if we want them into the hobby we have to accept that what they're going to be coming with and, and it's technology for them so for for Haley the, the pictures that she's been turning out that she's been capturing the Rosetta Nebula and the Orion Nebula and very little like she said we're learning Photoshop how to, how to correct so she's been amazing and she's passing that off to her friends as well so um, yeah, it's been, and the other thing about like Paul, Mike, and I, I guess I, I talk more about the night sky thing because of my Facebook page. That's what I try to bring. I'll introduce people, you know, here's what's going to happen this week. The moon's going to be beside Jupiter or whatever. And, and then, uh, so I had that kind of, uh, part to the show. Mike is the equipment guy. Mike's the, the genius with equipment. Like Mike, Mike Guyver, we call him because anything that broke, he can fix and he can make it better than it was before. So. Uh, Mike talks equipment and Paul talks astrophotography because that's what he's, you know, the very best at. So we kind of blend together. Each one of us bring a segment to it. And we can't forget Rosanna as well. Yeah. Uh, Rosanna Armstrong, who, who's a, who does a segment for us every week. She's been there right from the very beginning. She's too timid to be, come on the show, but she always prepares a segment for us. And it's very in-depth. And we call it Rosanna's Fun Fact. And that is a segment that gets added every week, along with Mike's binocular bud talk. He talks about a particular binocular target every week. Paul brings in the astrophotography tips of the week. And so we have little segments throughout the show as well that, you know, break up the show a little bit. But uh, we wouldn't be uh, the same show without Rosanna, for sure. So, Absolutely. Uh, the um, When the young girl was uh, unboxing her sea star, that was my first exposure to Sea Star. Okay. So, and oh. uh, tonight I'll be doing a, a bit of a presentation on all the on all the models after after you guys are are finished with this discussion. Um, as you look back on the two hundred shows, is there anything that you regret? <laughs> uh, well. Just the weather. Helping Chris into this, I regret, but no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My intro is a long time. <laughs> I, I have no regrets whatsoever. I mean, I show up every Sunday, and even when it's uh, some major holidays, we're here. And yep. it's because we do it because we're passionate about it, and we get to talk about astronomy, and we get to, you know, it, and of course, if you're presenting something like you're going to do tonight, Bill, um you have to spend some time learning it so you're always immersed in in learning and in a lot sort of stuff so uh so long as the those fires keep going then that'll be it'll never stop for us so are we regretful of anything i don't think so i don't think we've ever done a show we said why did we do that <laughs> because we're no, we said let's save that for the bloopers though <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> There's a blooper reel coming for sure. <laughs> well, hopefully you don't regret this this one. Um, Absolutely. Now I see a bunch of equipment, and I I see you in the on your website posing with with what looks like a attack um, tripod and mount, um, but everybody knows astronomers have a tendency to buy telescopes. Um, what what sort of what sort of equipment do you guys have? Mike, you want to just do your camera around the room? Uh, there be there. I've got seventeen scopes. <laughs> Say, you're, you're probably not going to be able to do your talk tonight if you let Mike show with scopes. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I'm doing a talk tomorrow night at our local meeting on the observatory trailer I built out of a cargo trailer. <laughs> oh. And I've got my observatory in the backyard. So, but yeah, uh, equipment I have. <laughs> Usually when someone says, I bought one of these, go, yeah, I had one. <laughs> nice scope. <laughs> Yeah. As long as I never let my wife sell my gear for what I told her I paid for it, that's the whole yeah, yeah. yeah. Astronomer's <laughs> prayer. Yeah. Well, I, I, have, a, I have a basic question um, here, um, and, and I, you know, I've I'm, I've never seen your show. So is it is is it on a Facebook platform or is it on a television? Like I I don't know even the basics. So so what? How are people? accessing uh the your their views by going to facebook or what it's, it's both it's facebook and youtube both so it's a facebook live off, off of my astronomy by the bay facebook page okay and then i have an astronomy by the bay youtube channel and it's broadcast there as well so it's broadcast oh. at the same time it's split to both to both uh, okay and, and my son did all that he's a technical guy he, he set it up on a server and it streams out to both platforms at the same time then after that uh rogers asked for permission to to download our episodes and put, and put it on their community channel, so they download the one off of YouTube. So if you're if you had a YouTube app or you have a YouTube app on your smartphone or your your TV, you can sit and watch it on YouTube on your television. Okay, and, and, and it's interactive, so we watch comments and questions. So if anybody asks questions along through the show, we, we try to get make sure that we answer. Like Michael will watch Facebook all the time, and and Paul will pick up YouTube or whatever, and we'll just watch for comments coming in and and uh, make sure that we re, re, uh, answer all the questions that are coming in as well. So. You, you said you weren't uh, tech savvy, but I think that anybody who can do a program and watch the comments that are coming. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, more wow. you know, it took a That's long time to get here. got it together. <laughs> yeah. We did so, a 200th episode and on the front of the 200th episode, I hit the wrong screen and something popped up. So just like back to the very <laughs> first show. So, but we don't get upset over, you know, like we know that we're amateurs uh, at, even at the program and it's, and it's our comfort level. And I think that might be something that people might, might enjoy too. Like we're not, you know, we're not uh, stuffy about the program. We're just trying to prevent, present what we, what, what we can, what we can. Right. And we're, again, we're after the beginners and, and some amateurs, some, uh, you know, advanced astronomers are following us too. We never knew that, but, you know, but we'll, uh, it, it's beginners to immediate intermediates and, and uh, the programs like, I can look at, uh, you know, the, the first few programs were at the moon in the backyard observatory. So Mike's observatory is one of the first ones. And, you know, uh, the treasures of Orion, uh, the Rosetta Nebula, what's that all about? Uh, sketching in post-processing, pro, uh, post that kind of stuff. Mike built a battery box. So we learned, you know, how to, how to build your own battery box. Paul's talked a lot about uh, how, to, uh, how to capture the moon or how to take a picture of the Milky Way or... You know, just that general kind of stuff that people might be interested in that they could experience when they when they leave the show and, and carry that information with them. We've had people that have sat at their telescopes and observing while they're listening to our program, they told us. I've had teachers in classrooms, I do a lot of classroom talks, and I've had teachers tell me that they've shown the YouTube or the, the program from the night before or the next day on Mondays in the classroom. They'll pick out segments and they'll, and they'll talk about it in the, in the class. So uh, we never know, you know who you're reaching, right? And that's the that's joy of it all. I think it's just, it's so much fun to be able to present. I never, ever thought I'd ever be in this position. I'm a, I'm a total introvert. Always been. Can you I tell? I never thought I'd ever be in this position. <laughs> <Not sure. laughs> Question for you, Chris. I, I grew up in a big family of, you know, eight of us, and I was a third of four brothers and six of eight kids. And, you know, I, I was kind of isolated. You know, I did my own little thing underneath the night sky when I was young. And until my kids grew up, I couldn't really enjoy it. But coming from an introvert, side of things getting to this part i i never never in a million years i ever thought i'd ever be here doing this <laughs> but this, it's been a lot of fun 
Uh, question question for you, you, Chris. Sure. Yeah. Did you say Astronomy by the Bay yeah. is the channel on YouTube? Okay, good. Yeah. Yes. And if you go to Astronomy by the Bay, there's a there's a, a link that says videos, and there's one that says live. You have to click mm -hmm. live one to get to the, the programs. But okay, Bruce, what is the Sunshine Coast channel? What's it called? Sunshine Coast yeah. Astronomy. Yeah. Dot C. I mean, uh, are you talking about a website or a Facebook? On YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I I always just Google <laughs> YouTube. I always just go to YouTube and then put in Sunshine Coast Astronomy, and I, you know. Okay, the reason I well? ask, I've I haven't ever looked us up, but they put my presentations on there, and I'm afraid to watch. <laughs> so, I never watch my show after the after the day. <laughs> Once yeah. it's up, it's up. It, it, whatever it is, what it is. Introverts <laughs> rule. What is it called? Sunshine <laughs> Coast. What is it? Sunshine Coast Astronomy. I can send you the link, Paul. If you like. It um. I can uh, it seems to me that uh, the the, um, the the other uh, club, not you, not the one you're you're with, but the other one you said that's right in handy to you, Victoria Center. This Victoria, Vancouver. Uh, yeah, uh, is that the one that's got the observatory? The, yeah. Oh, that's that's us. We well, the, Victoria yeah. has an observatory. Has the 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 government observatory. We have our own observatory. Um, and there should be pictures on our website. Okay. That, um, or if you look at um, the book that RASC has out talking about um, ways to build your own observatory, we're on the cover. Oh, fantastic. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Principally because Charles, one of our members, wrote it. So. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. There, there was a book that somebody put out about um, building observatories and it was and they talked uh, with everybody across who has already built one before he was going to to get ideas as to what are the right things and what are the wrong things they were weighing between um, roll off roofs versus dome styles and all that stuff. Was that part of you guys that book. I think it was called small observatories or building small observatories or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, Charles Ennis but was the author. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Then that, that's the book. I, actually, I have it. And uh, yeah, before yeah. I built mine, I read the book. <laughs> so it was uh, it was great uh, great uh, information. Yeah. And, and we also, um, uh, Charles and uh, formerly Bruce, were on the East Link um, What's what's the title? I just it, night lights. Night, night we, lights. We, we had a program, night lights. But let me tell you, it was totally different. In the in, it was highly structured. Uh, it was all pre-taped. You know, we were sort of given like an eight-minute window to do this kind of a talk, and a six-minute window to do that kind of talk. We sometimes spilled over, but it it was um, it was a a lot of preparation for me anyway. Um, and and not you know. Not not kind of like sitting down in front of a live audience and sort of telling them what I know about astronomy. It was very different. The live, the live one is very difficult. Like I, I do find every week I'm on there. Um, I'm, I've had a couple of cups of coffee before I get started. Cause, and I, and I, uh, <laughs> I really do get nervous about setting it all up. But I try to try to think to myself that it's just Mike and Paul on the show with me. I, I used to do a lot of uh, live feeds on my phone, and I'd have the phone mounted on the telescope and talk about the moon or whatever and even there you know i might have 50 people or so watching but there's just that one person i'm talking to so i'm comfortable that way but it, the, the prep time it, we used to do a lot of presentations so get away from that a little bit we're bringing in guests now which is kind of nice because it helps relax the environment a bit more and we get to learn other things that's happening but people will submit photos now and, and i'll share their photos and and then there's the intro and the closing and the comments all through the show so it's a little bit to get the segments together but uh, but it's still fun. I could, if, uh, are, uh, do I have the ability to share? Or? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, maybe, oh, well, maybe I need to give that to you. Hang on. I Chris? Just, uh, yeah. I'll just share Chris, my... I strongly recommend an Italian red before you do this sort of thing. It uh, helps immensely. <laughs> uh, glasses. Uh, well, no. it's been a little bit of Appleton sometimes. Like, <laughs> sure. Coffee cup. Or screen if you're from cup. the Newfoundland. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
And okay. James has posted the the links to our uh, our website and the Facebook group. Okay, let me just open up my chat. There it is. Okay, so uh, thank you. Uh, so I think you can uh, uh, share. Okay. I, think, uh, I was just going to share the. Uh, yeah. I'll just share the screen with the. Uh, yeah. Smile at number three. So. So yeah, there's the. Uh, that's the Astronomy by the Bay YouTube channel. Uh, right now, there's 2,100 subscribers. That's been like that for quite a while. Um, but I don't really look at that number. It does, it's just, it's a it's a number. Mike and Paul say no. <laughs> I look at it mostly. But uh, this, these are the, these are the programs that have been on there. So uh, there's everything from, like, say, Treasures of Orion down to uh, printing accessories. How do you, uh, talking about daytime astronomy, how to do your, do up your uh, telescope. Uh, star trails and choosing the right telescope and we've got in the you know topics of countless but you see we're laughing at a lot of them because that's what we're like <laughs> we just uh, we keep it very light you know there's our our uh, christmas shows and uh, it just goes on but uh recently we like we've been getting into uh the uh the guest features which is really nice we did bring the the, the uh, uh solar eclipse uh event through too uh, there's 13,000 views of the solar par partial solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. um, and there's 45,000 views of the lunar eclipse. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just all general basic stuff. And there's our hundredth episode, and, and we've changed our you know our picture uh, from uh, there. We have this person locally that does us a nice cartoon picture for her. <laughs> anyway, that's that's the that's the uh, YouTube channel. So it's just a uh, you know, trying to by the way. And then my Facebook page is here. This is this is me uh, without the guys because the guys joined me for the Sunday Night Astronomy Show. But uh, Astronomy by the Bay is this channel. And it's, it's seventeen thousand followers now. But I just I continue to just update on what I see happening. This is about the new moon, super new moon, and the tides, and you know just the sunspots and things that are happening that they might enjoy. Uh, one of the cool, cool things I liked about this, though, is that the uh, Astronomy by the Bay is set up kind of like a Facebook business. Facebook gives you two choices, a group or a business. And when I started Facebook in 2016, I had no idea what to choose. And I only chose this because Mike and I were going to the St. Rest Beach all the time. And people were asking, when are you going to come back? And I didn't know because I work, I do air conditioning for Bell. That's my job. So I get called out a lot. And I couldn't say when I would be back, of course, the weather as well. So uh, I came home and asked my wife, you know, how do I tell people? She said, well, let me just create a Facebook page and tell people that way. So I did. And the page was only set up really just to tell people when I would be going to the beach so they could go check it out. But then with the weather and everything, it just started to snowball. Um, but when I look at the insights of it, um, I go to audience. There's our audience. So through, uh, through Facebook. Um, so it's, it's 70% women and 30% men that follow. You must be doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you attracting the ladies? Do you think? Yeah, 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 right. it, it's, it's all me. It's all me. I'll it's take all, it. All <laughs> like, you know, I think it's just that there's, there's a, there's a piece there that's missing. People don't, don't get that. Like I, 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 I am on the program too. We try to introduce everything to beginners. Like, you know, we're, Again, we're, we're the welcoming thing to let people into the hub come on and it's inviting. And we don't, you know, no matter what the question is, it's not a stupid question, just ask it anyway. I get I get 50 emails a day from my other channels and stuff coming into it. And, it, and a lot of them are just, I saw this thing in the sky last night, you can tell me what it is, or, you know, I saw the moon, it was really different. So that, that demographic right there is really nice to see because I can see that people are interested in the hobby and, you know, uh, hmm. it's just a, it, it's it's something that I I kind of looked at and said, well, that's that's interesting because there are lots of women that are interested in this hobby, um, and our when our, our local meetings are usually half and half. You know, they're they're pretty good that way. So um, I can stop sharing here. Just a little bit about the background, I guess, and, and why why the Sunday Night Astronomy Show kind of sticks to beginners. I think is is that reason too that we. Um, that's the ones we want to attract, I guess. This, our theme uh, recently has has been our, our semi model and unofficial is the sky belongs to everyone. 
That's it. And we've been doing a lot of um, uh, intentional diversification attempts at, at the audience, young, old, um, various targeted groups, untargeted groups, and just general welcoming. And uh, uh, we hope that they transfer into membership. Has that helped your, um, your center? Uh, it, as far as RASC membership goes, I don't know if it has helped a whole lot. I know that for our local clubs, yes. Our local club, when I first started going to meetings, was maybe 15 people, and now we're regularly running out of seats. And that's just in our St. John local what, club. I think what spawned that was um, back, um, I think it was 2015, I think, if my memory's any good at all. Um, we started doing out, outside of our club, we started to do workshops and mm -hmm. we would uh, basically do these astronomy workshops and we'd have like 50 people come into these workshops and where we would, you know, talk about astronomy in general, talk about telescopes and then invite them to bring them in, their telescopes in for those who had just bought them and show them how to set them up. So Mike would take reflectors, I would take, say, refractors and Chris might do, you know, Dobsonians or something. And then, you know, we would all show people how to use their, their specific scopes. After we started doing that, then our local club started to grow almost leaps and bounds from there. And, uh, and I think that's, from at least from my experience being in the club, yeah. I wasn't in the club until 2011. Uh, but from at right around 2015, when we started doing that, that's when we found uh, uh, growth in the local club. The other thing about bringing uh, newcomers to, the, to your club, too, is that you want to grow your outreach, right? You want to grow your volunteer list. You want to have a bucket of people that you can call on when these groups, the guide groups or schools or whatever are calling for outreach events. So you never have an up and up pool of people. You know, you might have five or six that are regulars, but how do you grow that pool a little bit? So what we've been kind of doing is, is bringing in new people into the hobby and then trying to get them persuaded to come out a night and join us on a public outreach event. And we always try to pick a night when there's a moon up. So they can set up their telescope and just show them the moon. Well, I don't know anything about the moon. You don't need to know anything about the moon. Show them the moon. Look at all the craters. Look at this big brown ball. It's up there in the sky. You know, and you can talk a little bit about you know, features on the moon, but you don't have to know that much because the public's going to entertain themselves. They want to take a picture through the telescope. They want, to, they want a memory to take home with them. So you put your adapter on the telescope and let them take a picture. Just keep them feeding them through. Saturn is another one that just blows them away, of course, anytime. But once you once you get the newcomers out to these uh, outreach events and they start to feel, you know, that wasn't too bad. I, I could probably do that again, you know, and, and, and they start to build a little bit of confidence. Well, now you've got them pulled in a little bit so you can start to invite them to smaller events. And and then they start to build a little bit of confidence and now your, your pool of people has started to grow. So that's how we've seen, we've gone from maybe just two or three volunteers up to, there was a list of about uh, 20 of us right now in the pool. And, you know, not everybody's going to be able to make it this Tuesday night, but maybe you've got enough there to be able to handle the crowd. And so that's a big factor, too, I think, keeping it at that beginner level to to introduce people to say, you know, you can handle you can do this. Um, bring your equipment out and we'd love to have you and help you. Out. Yeah, you, you use the term workshop mm -hmm. and, and then you, but it's then it kind of seemed to shift to an outdoor a setting where you're looking at the moon. So That's a little bit of both. What you mean by a, a workshop? Where would you hold a workshop, and how would you advertise it, and what would you do about the weather? Well, um, the city, the city here for our club. Uh, I'll just take quickly, Paul. The city no, here, uh, the city here offers us. Uh, we've got Rockwood Park, which is the largest inner city park in Canada, actually, and they allow us to use the Interpretation Center, which is in a beautiful building, and it's all set up for where we have our club meetings and everything. They allow us to have that. We do two public events for them a year and we get to use the building for free. So uh, we've got the only club, I think your membership costs nothing. If you walk in the door, you're a member. That's uh, another inviting part about uh, the St. John Astronomy Club. And um, what we would do is uh, we, by holding the workshops, we decided we would do a, you know, a moon workshop. We'd each pick a, you know, a quarter or a section of something of the moon. And we would invite people, maximum 50, because that's all we could fit in the, in the, in the interpretation center. And we would actually hold a class for what, two hours or 
Sometimes it would go on to three hours for you know, on, a, on a Saturday night or a Friday night or something like that. And uh, we'd run it for a couple of weeks until that course was finished. And then we'd have a chat and get together and run another course on, you know, let's do the night sky and constellations. And we would explain to people all of that and just run a workshop. And, th and that, those are indoors. But if we had people bring scopes and stuff and they get dark outside, then after a little workshop was over, you kind of move out onto the deck, set your scopes up and start looking at, at objects in the sky. And it kind of continues on from there for a few extra minutes, I'll say. <laughs> okay. okay. Hey. If that yeah. helps explain. Yeah, yeah. No, give, no, that gets, it gives me a picture of what you're doing. The here. other thing I like about uh, what we do is uh, it, it, it just seems to be the, uh, the way the people in this club are. Uh, nobody cares if you show up with a plane wave or a $99 Tasco. There are both telescopes and we're both going to help you, you know, look at things in the night sky with it one way or the other. And uh, I very, very much appreciate the group that we're with for being that way. Like, it doesn't matter who you are, or what you are, what equipment you have. You're welcome to come on in, bring it with you. We'll show you how to use it. We'll get it up and working and we'll get you looking at the night sky one way or the other. Mike and I have been set up at that place he calls Saints Rest Beach, which is outside the park. We call it the Urban Nature Park, and it's the first urban star park in Canada. But anyway, we set up there in this beach, and uh, we've invited people to bring their telescopes out that don't know anything about their telescope. They'll set up right beside us on the beach, and I'll have my dog, and Mike will have his C8 or whatever, and that person is sitting right beside us, and we get them, okay, so here, well, let's line up your finder scope first, get you ready before it gets dark, and then they stay for the whole evening. And we're showing them around the night sky with their telescope. They're, you know, so they're learning. And, and it's all for free. Just come out and sit up beside us, right? So all of a sudden on Facebook, you go, when are you guys going to the beach again? <laughs> and they <laughs> start coming down regularly with us, some of them. So <laughs> interesting. I, I can show you a few pictures of that spot, maybe. I don't know if that, if we still get time to carry on here. Or... Oh yes, yes. Oh, we yeah. typically have have the guests speak for 40 minutes to an hour. So oh, okay. Um be that long for you. Let me see. <laughs> That's easy for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed your shows were over an hour. <laughs> yeah. I don't have drifted a little past. Yes. <laughs> they do, yes, they do. That's a short one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at Chris's background trying to figure out what that red scope is. Oh, that's a oh the Ebbin scientific. Ebbin scientific. Um, that's one I don't have, and I want one. Oh the astro scan. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's an oldie, but it's a favorite. Oh yeah. It's, it's a really nice, easy scope to use. Like it just, there's nothing to it. It's well balanced. They're, they're wonderful they're, for uh, doing solar observing with. Uh, yes. Uh, they're collectible for sure. Yeah. That's why right. it's more of a collectible than it is uh, an active one. My C11. C11. Kurt does a lot of sketching, and so uh, that's what he uses. Yep. You put that out, you put a solar filter on it, and then he'll sketch his sun's sunspots and whatever he's doing for the day. So, so they're wonderful because they're just so easy to move. They're just like a little, it's like a little gyro. I'm just going to move through. I, I, I had presented the uh, a slideshow to Rask Halifax on their monthly meeting uh, just last month, where they had asked me to join them uh, to present um, astronomy by the bay, like where it came from and where it started, kind of thing. So. Uh, but let's present a few slides from that one. Where am I at here? This one? Yeah, I think that will do. Is that uh, showing up? Yes? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. That, that's our city, St. John. I mean, we're we're along the coast like like you guys are. So, you know, we've got this. This is St. Martin's uh, outside of our city limits. There's a nice set of caves down there. And, and we, all of our views in this area are kind of looking south. That's Fundy National Park and... I, I work as an HVAC technician, so I travel southern New Brunswick, so I get a chance to get out and take a look at different different locations. I'm going to skip by these few, but this is my family. <laughs> you know, I, I came from a big family, so I was isolated there and pulled away and kind of took my interest in astronomy. When I was a kid, I went to this place uh, called the Kings Peninsula. We got across on the ferry. My grandparents lived up there. They had a, a home. Uh, and we went up there and summer camped uh, through the summer. So when I was younger, I just lay down on the grass and look up at the night sky, and, and uh, wanted to know that someday down the road I would be, uh, I'd be, I would be into it. Picked up my first telescope off eBay. It was a piece of junk. 
Kurt tried to get it working for me, couldn't. And I just said, you know, I'm just going to pause until I get an opportunity to get out and get a good telescope. I bought my good one. I went out one night looking around the sky, saw the Andromeda galaxy through, to, through the eyepiece. I said, amazing. I looked around, there was no one there to share it with me. So it's just, I got to stop doing this. And I started doing sidewalk astronomy. I'm just going to flip through these. But this is one of our events at uh, the Urban Nature Park in St. John. Um, and uh, the typical event for us for outreach is, is that we visit this place uh, usually a couple of times a year, maybe three times a year. And they support, we support them and in their initiative to be an urban star park. And they support us by coming in and, and offering us a, a place to set up. Uh, that's the park there. It's Comet Neowise up there in the corner. Uh, but this is the beach that we set up on mostly. And our views here are, are looking south towards Nova Scotia. So when Mike and I are down there, or Paul and Mike and I, we're, we're set up in this location. There's beautiful sunsets and stuff. It's, you know, it's right on the coast. So it's still just like you guys are. It, it, there's nothing like being by the bay and enjoying the views. Um, this is our night sky. Now the local, the local uh, power company uh, went through an LED retrofit. Uh, they chose wrong color lights, but they did put full cutoff fixtures. So we weren't able to get that view of the, of the Milky Way from this location. And it's not a location that's a dark sky, this part anyway of the beach. Uh, we, we go there basically to, to have the public come out and join us. So if they come by with their headlights and, and you know, they're beaming their lights and their eyeballs, it doesn't matter to us because we're there to, to share the views of, of uh, the sky, not, not necessarily for a dark sky. I started that in 2016, and this is us at the beach again. That's Mike and I. And, you know, people will just drop in with their, with their gear and set up beside us, and, and uh, we get lots of company. It's a, it's a very popular spot. Over a million visitors a year visit that park. So it's a spot where we can get a lot of people that'll come through and, and just, uh, and everybody's in a happy mood because they all want to look through a telescope. <laughs> you know, when you invite them to the telescope, oh, look at Saturn? Oh, sure. So it's been a, it's been a pretty popular spot for me anyway. And there's, uh, that's Maggie Baca. She's in our club. So she brought her little C, uh, C4 telescope out and I was helping her set it up. So that's a, a common thing for us. Uh, but yeah, it's been a, been a great spot to, to set up. Um, after, I, I received the Killock Award back in 2019 um, for Rask and Jenna. This is Jenna Hines. Um, she had said, no, I'm going to come down with it. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, astronomy in your location. I said, okay, so come on down. So we, we knew that she was coming. So I, I uh, contacted our local club. And I said, listen, can I... Can I put this message out there? Can I invite everybody to come down to the park with me? I would really love to set our telescopes up on the beach and just give Jen a really nice night to remember kind of thing about telescopes. So I just put the request out. I thought it might get one or two people. And then the clubs just started showing up. And out of, out of nowhere, all of a sudden, you know, we got a full beach of telescopes. So I was just, I was just choked up by that, just to know that, you know, the group would get together like this. And this is what the group is like here. It's, 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 there's a lot of camaraderie. Uh, everybody wants a photo of the moon, so I started doing Facebook lives on uh, on the moon and stuff. Just set up there with my my uh, cell phone, <laughs> and uh, sometimes it's not as warm as others, but it's still a nice spot to set up. We get goofy a little time once in a while with our moon shots. Mm -hmm. uh, this is back in 2017 when I was offering the the live view of uh, the solar eclipse, partial solar eclipse. There's my cell phone. I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook at the time. And then uh, my son rebroadcasted out on YouTube for me. So we had a total of uh, 42,000 views altogether. But I mean, they're short views. They're not people that are coming back or anything. It's just, but uh, and that was back in uh, 2021 when I was doing it again, partial eclipse. These are the workshops that Mike talked about. So we would set up in a, in a big location and just offer talks about telescope. Mike, I do one week about the night sky. Mike could do a week about telescopes or equipment and Paul do a week about astrophotography. And uh, that's how we ran those. Um, there are a lot of them. Somebody, somebody holds my hands. I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, for us, it's all it's all about outreach. It's it's really been uh, a great club to be part of because you get the chance to to share with so many groups. I've been doing a lot more classroom talks lately myself and senior songs and stuff. So. I really enjoy that part of it. The kids have so many expressions and so many questions and they're all great questions. And uh, I come back from those very rewarded every time. Um, and sometimes they give me some little gifts, which is kind of nice. 
the media local has been really good to us too. They've been really asking about, especially with the eclipse coming up. Uh, this is back when we talked about COVID. I was camping this weekend and I had my little scope with me and I said, how are we going to do this? So we might come up with the idea of setting up a 12 volt monitor on a battery pack. And I was feeding my cell phone over to it and people were standing around me right there, about 10 people who we were all kind of keeping our distance from each other. Uh, we went from classroom talks to, to online uh, instruction for me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Someone will get involved a little more. This is us back in uh, at Fundy National Park. Um, then this is where we had decided to, uh, to talk about uh, getting together for the Sunday Night Astronomy Show. So we've, we've changed a little bit over the years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then again, again, of course, with the, with the uh, asteroid award. But mostly the Facebook page is just, is just talking about this. And this is what kind of things we bring up. You know, we'll talk about superior conjunction. What does that mean? Uh, you know, what, what kind of treasures can you see in Orion uh, if you use, uh, can you use Orion as a signpost? And, uh, and then uh, we're starting a little bit about the eclipse. That's really about all of that part of the wanted to show you, though. Shoot the moon contest that I go through. But, uh, and the most recent one with some kids' uh, photos. Anyway, that's, but it's, it's all, it, for the three of us really, it's, it's just all about outreach. I don't know if that helps any or not, but. Yeah. Well, we, we really do appreciate you guys showing up tonight. Um, <laughs> as you were are probably aware, our venue got flooded out from a water main break and, and we're going, what do we do? What do we do? So I have an idea. I'll ask, uh. I'll see, I'll see if these guys on the other side of the country want to want to join us. Um, and it's been um, it's been great having you here. Um, I know it's getting late there now. Uh, if it's still you know it's still dark outside, you can go outside and look. But um, uh, we appreciate it. And um, uh, again, thank you very much for for showing up. Thank you for your time. And uh, we wish you well. And somebody comes on our, our uh, Facebook page and posts it, posts every week. The Sunday Night Astronomy Show is live. Awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I can't remember who's doing that, but but uh, okay, I'll go watch it. And so yeah, now I now I try to watch it when I can. Um, Thank Thank you very much for the invite. It was it was a real pleasure. Thank you for your pictures. They were awesome. Thank you so much. Come on, come on yeah. and join us sometime. If you ever go to the East Coast, you know where to find us. We'll be at St. Yeah, Rescue. I was I was there many, many years ago. It's a lovely place, and the people are just awesome. So thank you for coming out. Thanks I can so say much. the same thing. I was out in Chilliwack in 78, and I loved it, and I would love to go back. <laughs> well, you know, uh, this August, we're planning a star party out here, and it has a high probability of... Uh, of clear skies. The summertime is our dry season. Uh, oh. The rest of the year is not. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yes, we're we're planning. Uh, worked out the probabilities of uh, clear sky, and so late August, coast of BC, Seashell Airport. We're gonna we're planning a to have a star party, and we're inviting people from all over, including our counterpart, Sunshine Coast Astronomy Club in Australia. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Same wow. name, and so people get get mixed up sometimes. So we ask answer <laughs> Australian questions sometimes. But I, um, just, just quickly, I got a funny story about Chris. We were at the beach. This lady came on Facebook and said, I'm at the beach. Where are you? And Chris said, well, I'm down the other end. She goes, well, I can't find you. Only to find out she was in Australia, <laughs> thinking that we were in Australia. That's going to be by the bay. <laughs> the bay in Australia. Uh, yeah, that would... <laughs> That's crazy. It's yeah. a small world. It's yes, a small it world. <laughs> very much is. Thanks, so, very much. thanks again. And, um, Thank you, gents. Time to hit bed. <laughs> <laughs>